Today, we will be talking about knockout mice, which are laboratory mice whose pre-existing gene or genes have been knocked out of their genome. What are knockout mice used for? Scientists use them to figure out how a gene functions normally. Observing knockout mice can give clues on how the analogous genes in humans work because humans and mice share many genes. Some examples of what the mice are used for are modeling diseases and health phenomena such as cancer, obesity, and anxiety. The knockout mice can also be used to test new drugs and therapies. So, how are knockout mice made? First, embryonic stem cells are collected from mouse embryos four days after fertilization. These cells are used because they can become any kind of cell later on as the mouse grows, and if a specific gene is knocked out of the stem cells, they'll be knocked out in the adults. Next, artificial DNA is put into the chromosomes of the embryonic stem cells. There are two ways to do this. The first method is called gene targeting or homologous recombination, in which the target gene is directly manipulated in the stem cell's nucleus. This method uses an artificial DNA fragment that contains the same sequence to the target gene. This DNA only has a genetic tag, also known as a reporter gene, and is inactive. When this artificial DNA is introduced, the cell's nuclear machinery recognizes the sequence and swaps out its own gene or part of the gene for the artificial one. The artificial DNA basically does nothing, so it knocks out the function of the original gene. The advantage of this method is that it is highly efficient, but the disadvantage is that the target gene's whole sequence must be known, which is not available sometimes. The second method is called gene trapping, which also manipulates genes in the nucleus. However, this process is mostly random. The artificial DNA is randomly inserted into a gene and it stops the cell's RNA splicing mechanism from working. In turn, the target gene is unable to produce its protein properly and the artificial gene knocks out the function of the target gene. The advantages are that the specific DNA sequences do not need to be known and a single vector can knock out multiple genes. The disadvantages are that it is not as efficient or specific as gene targeting and sometimes the target gene is never knocked out because it is random. After the embryonic cells are successfully edited, they are grown in a laboratory and then injected into early mouse embryos which are then implanted into a female mouse. The mouse babies will have knockout tissue and regular tissue with the functioning target gene. In order to get mice with 100% knockout tissue, also known as homozygous knockouts, the mice must be crossbred. Finally, what are the drawbacks and limitations of knockout mice? 15% of gene knockouts are developmentally lethal, so the mouse die before reaching adulthood. In some cases, the gene in a mouse could also have a different function than the gene in a human. Similarly, the knockout mice could produce different characteristics than those that are observed in humans with a dysfunctional gene. Nonetheless, knockout mice are incredibly useful in studying genes. The application of such studies can be used to understand and treat human diseases. So, thank you, lab mice, and thank you for watching my video. Bye!